Hello YouTube, I wanted to make this video so that you could see what the development process looks like for me and what it could look like for you too. I'd also like to let you know that the Kickstarter campaign for Skipper is now in the pre-launch phase, so if you're interested after this video, please go and sign up for notifications. Please enjoy the video. When I'm working on a project like this, I find it easiest to split it up into defined sections and then complete them one at a time. I'm going to start with the hardware section. The goal of this is to build a strong, simple platform for the Etch-a-Sketch to sit on and be driven by stepper motors. I designed and then printed all the pieces that I needed. Once that was finished, I moved on to assembly. Luckily, the belts I ordered arrived early, so I didn't have to mess around with the slightly stretchy 3D printed belts I made. I bolted the motors onto the brackets and attached everything to the Etch-a-Sketch. Originally, I used a piece of enameled copper wire to provide the tension needed for the back of the Etch-a-Sketch. But after some reflection, that really didn't seem like an ideal solution, so I designed a ratcheting tensioner that could use a piece of electrical wire to provide the tension. With it all set up, I can move on to designing the electrical system. For the electrical system, I'm of course going to be using Skipper as the controller, as well as a stepper motor driver board I created a little while ago that includes two TMC2130 stepper motor drivers, as well as an accelerometer and a 2.4 GHz transceiver. This board is possibly the next product I'm going to be releasing, so let me know in the comments if you're interested. As for now, it's just a prototype, meaning I need to do some work to get it ready to use. Bringing you home to me from across the sea And it seems like you're already here Whenever I hear Christmas bells chime in my ear mm. When a snowflake falls when a bluebird calls on Christmas Love songs that we heard All just seem absurd on Christmas When you hold me tight In the shimmering lights of Christmas
firelights up a starry night on Christmas. Promises we made all just seems to fade on Christmas. Now it's time to wire everything up. I'm going to be creating my own custom cables. If you're interested in doing this yourself, I'll leave some links in the description to where you can buy the connectors as well as the tools to crimp your own cables. Christmas is coming the snowflakes will be falling It's the most wonderful time of year So hang up your stockings Put the tinsel on the tree Because Christmas is coming, my dear It's the only time of year the reindeer fly you can't see them on the sleigh ride across the sky. Gather all your family round, or go out and paint the town. It's the only time of year the whole wide world turns upside down. So baby, light a fire, and we'll toast the night away, because Christmas is coming all Before I start programming, I'm going to explain to you what makes this different than Arduino, and what makes me love Skipper as a development tool. I'm going to be using a method called bare metal programming or register level programming. Nearly every commercial product that uses a microcontroller uses register level programming due to its ability to create incredibly efficient programs. Not only that, but using register level programming will lead to a complete understanding of microcontrollers and you'll begin to understand how simple these devices actually are. To do this on Arduino would be incredibly complex, but Skipper gives you the tools to make it easy. There are three main tools that I'll be leaning on extensively for this project. The first tool is an ST-Link, which allows me to step through the code line by line, as well as view the memory inside the chip to see exactly what my program is doing. The second tool is an oscilloscope, which when paired up with Skipper's oscilloscope probe clips, allow me to securely clip onto the GPIO pins and see the changes that I'm making in real time. The third and probably most important tool is the reference manual of the STM32F407. The reference manual includes all the information you need to know about where registers are located and what every single bit does inside of them. The first distinction I need to make is between the peripherals and the core of the microcontroller. A microcontroller is made up of many separated hardware devices called peripherals all connected together through the memory of the microcontroller. The processor's only job is to read, modify, and write data to and from the memory. It does this by modifying something called registers. Registers are bits of memory that are accessible by both the peripheral as well as the processor that allows the processor to configure and run the peripheral. The code that you write goes directly to the processor and tells it how it's going to modify the peripherals throughout the program. As an example, when you want to turn on an LED, you are simply writing code that tells the processor to modify a bit of memory, which is then read by the GPIO peripheral, and the corresponding LED is turned on by that peripheral. For me, one of the largest benefits of learning register level programming is the fact that the skill can be transferred to any microcontroller from any manufacturer. With that out of the way, I will tell you about my simplification process and how I outline programs efficiently. You're never going to make a dent in your project if you think of it as a complex task. 
The idea of writing an image on an Etch-a-Sketch needs to be broken down into simpler components so that I can actually start outlining this program. The first simplification is that I'm not writing a program to draw an image. I'm simply writing a program that goes coordinate to coordinate, and then giving it a list of coordinates to draw an image. I can now start outlining the code, adding things like speed, steps per millimeter, and everything else that I know I'm going to need to access in the program. Once that's finished, I need to figure out how I'm going to actually drive the stepper motors. Stepper motor drivers require two inputs. The first is direction and the second is step. The direction pin decides whether the motor will be rotating clockwise or counterclockwise. Since this only needs to be controlled at the beginning of a travel move, I'm going to control it with GPIO pins. The second input is step. The step input takes pulses that rotate the stepper motor in a defined amount every single pulse. By varying the frequency of this, we can change the speed and distance that the motor travels. For this, I'm going to be using peripherals called timers. Timers allow you to set the frequency and amount of pulses, which is perfect for this application. That means that all my program has to do is for each travel move to send the timers a frequency of pulses and a number of pulses in order to get the motors to go to exactly where I want them to. I fully understand if you're a little bit confused right now, but that's why I created Skipper. I created Skipper so I could learn this, and I released Skipper so that you can too. If you're interested in product development, or just want to learn about microcontrollers and remove the confusion that most people have, Skipper is the ultimate tool for doing that. I won't make you suffer through the four hours of programming, but I'll leave a link in the description in case you're interested in seeing what the final file looks like. Once the program was finished, I decided to give it a quick test to make sure everything was working properly. And once that was out of the way, it was time to figure out how I was going to get a list of coordinates in order to draw an image on the Etch-a-Sketch. My first idea was to use a 3D printer slicer to export one layer of G-code, which is essentially a 2D image that can be turned into coordinates pretty easily. But after further testing, I realized that 3D printer slicers really aren't optimized for continuous line printing, as there's too many travel moves to make the image look good. After looking into it, I discovered that SVG files would be perfect for my application, as they're designed to export a list of coordinates that can be followed to create an image. If we open up an SVG file in a text editor, we can see that there's a path tag, which includes all the information, including coordinates, also known as vectors, that if followed will create the image contained in the file. So with that figured out, I opened up Inkscape, which is a free vector image editor that can be used to create or modify SVG files. I added the text I wanted and then connected all the internal islands to make one continuous line, as well as added a star in between the two words to connect them. Next I converted all the curves into lines to make the file easier to deal with, and then exported it as an SVG file to my computer. The next challenge was going to be taking the SVG commands and converting them into a format that could be directly pasted into the program. My favorite language for stuff like this is Python, as it allows me to efficiently implement complex tasks very quickly. Since I only exported straight lines, all this program had to do was convert four different SVG commands into a coordinate array. The first two commands are M and L, which stand for move and line. These two are very simple as they just contain an M or an L followed by an X and Y coordinate that can be directly pasted into the array. The next two commands are H and V. They stand for horizontal and vertical and that's the file's way of telling you that it wants a horizontal line or a vertical line. The H command will only contain a new X value and the V command will only contain a new Y value. For this all I need to do is take the previous X or Y value and insert it into the missing slot of the new coordinate. I made the Python file keep track of the number of coordinates and then construct a new C array that can be directly pasted into the program. I clicked run and let the Etch-a-Sketch draw out the image.
After inspecting the image, it looked like there were problems wherever the Etch-a-Sketch changed direction, indicating that there was backlash in the system. To fix this, I created a test that was essentially just a bunch of spikes that would test the Etch-a-Sketch's ability to rapidly change direction. What I discovered was that the spikes were dull, indicating that I was correct about the backlash problem. To fix this, I implemented some code that would have the Etch-a-Sketch insert a travel move at the beginning of every change in direction. After some tuning, I discovered that 1.5mm was perfect to mitigate the backlash problem. And with everything finished, I set up the camera slider, clicked record, and finished the project. Silent night, I only have one wish for the shooting star. Holy night, send me someone to love so I can hold their hand while we're at skating. Oh, I want a Christmas kind of spot